Hi, this is the part 2 of the lesson 5 of this course. So now let's quit the cylinders which are meant for pistons. Open a sketch on the front plane and draw the three circles which closely resemble the ones in the picture. Position and size them accordingly and extrude it 135mm from the mid plane. Now, for creating the step around the cylinders, as it can be seen in the pictures, let's open a sketch again on the front plane and offset the relevant entities. On a side note, you can both convert and offset an entity if you want to produce a geometry right around it. Now, you'll notice that if we extrude the whole profile, then the step will be visible above the cylinders too, which is not what we want. So let's go back and trim the upper halves. You can use the power trim when you just want to rub off certain geometries. You will see other types later on. Right, so you might have seen in the pictures that the bottom part is sort of a curved pattern. To replicate that, let's open a sketch again on the front plane and draw the necessary profile using the splines. We are going to use convert entities again to get the basic reference points. Now, convert entities is an excellent tool when you want to produce the precise geometries derived off of other entities. It also helps create an automated design since the relations to the reference entities are maintained. So if it changes, the new entity is adopted. Now trim off any minute entities which might be hiding in the intersections since these will create geometry error which are not visible generally. These also create problems when you generate the final STL file for 3D printing. It will not be watertight. You can also use check sketch functionality which highlights very small gaps which might be present. Now exit the sketch and make extruded cut with a through all end condition. Open a sketch on the front plane again and try to draw the shape with splines. Now you can snap to geometry when you are normal to it without actually projecting it on the current plane as the software does that internally. It does save us a few steps. It will take a lot of time before you master the use of splines, especially how to create a given shape in the minimum number of spine points. Now it is the most important consideration when it comes to spline, since more are the number of spline points, more are the curvature changes. Now something which helps is to add the spline point where you see a curvature change and once you are finished try to imagine if you can delete a point and still achieve the desired shape. We add the spline point when we see an inflection point which is simply a point at which the curvature changes from negative to positive. Now note that you can even add smart dimensions to precisely control the shape, size, inclination and curvature which you will see later on in this course. Now, extrude the profile with a random height of 179. You will see in a minute why we are not specific about the height in this case. Now, at this point, we will go on and on creating extrudes and cuts, and we can make virtually anything with it given we have all the time in the universe. But our purpose here is to learn as much as possible in the minimal time. So, let's touch a new tool here called the Combine. Using the Combine tool, you can add, subtract, or operate a common area between the two geometries, which is exactly what you're going to do in this case. You can see that the side surfaces, or the feature D here, is not just a prismatic geometry with the length and breadth and height. It is a surface which changes simultaneously in height, length and depth. Now to replicate that, you will have to create two geometries, out of which one will define how the target geometry will change in front view, and the other will define how it will change in top view. Now note that you can do the same with the curves too by using a tool called Composite Curve which can generate a curve which changes simultaneously in 3D. Right, so to create a geometry which will define how the feature D will change when seen from the top, let's draw a reference plane. Now you might wonder why can't we open a sketch on the top plane, but remember that we need to extract the common geometry between the two. So both the geometries have to merge into each other. Now to create a reference plane, we have numerous methods. 
For now, let's specify three points on the plane. Start a sketch on it and try to imagine how it should look like from the top. Now let's launch the combine tool. You can see that there are three options here, add, subtract and comma. The meaning is obvious and in this case our requirement is to generate a comma. Select the two bodies and hit the PV button. Remember that we did not merge the previous two bodies. Note that at this point we are in a multi-body environment, which means any body can be inserted into a new part for the host or requirements like creating assembly or producing an STL file for 3D printing. Now let's add the fillet to the main body and merge it with the newly created body using the same combined tool. You can notice that after this operation we are left out with only one body. At this point, let's go back and refine the geometry further. Alright, let's create the receptors for the fluid lines which is named F. Let's open a sketch on the right plane. It's too it rough since these are just supporting features and we only have to keep the overall dimensions of the brake assembly right so we can fit it to the suspension. As you can see, we are not fully defining or constraining the sketch which is not a good practice when modeling production parts. But if you're sure of the position or the design is just for illustration, you can fully define in a snap. Just go to the option display delete relation on the command manager and select the option. Now let's use thin extrude to model the feature. You can see here that if I need to change the direction of extrusion, I only need to select an edge and it will be done. Let's give it approximate dimensions and exit. Also if you need to make some minor adjustments, you can do it from right outside both to the feature and to the sketch. To produce this feature on the other side, you can use the same sketch and offset the extrusion, which you will see in some time will not work in this case. So we will have to go back and redo it. One more thing, if you forget to check the thin feature option, you cannot go back and do so on the same feature. You'll have to delete it and redo it. Now let's mirror the feature. You can see that I forgot to make the cut to make it hollow. So let me go back and do that. Note that if you want to create the new feature, which is created after the mirror, you will either have to roll back the mirror and then create the new feature or you can create the new feature and then drag it above the mirror in the timeline. Make sure not to create any reference to an entity which was created because of the mirror. Because then you cannot drag the new feature above the mirror. Right, so you might have noticed that the actual caliper is a hollow part. Now if you want to produce a constant thickness shell, you will use the shell command. But this part has become too complex for the shell to handle. So to make it hollow, let's create the sketch on the front plane again. After this, make a cut from the mid plane with an appropriate depth. In this case, it is 81. Use the section view to see if it is alright. Alright, let's see how can we add text and extrude or cut it into the body. First off, you will need an entity on which the text will be added for positioning purpose. 
It can be any shape, but in this case to maintain the symmetry, let's offset the edge. Now access the tool either from the sketch bar or from the insert menu. I personally prefer the search bar. Simply type the letters and when the commands come on the top, hit enter. Now select the curve of positioning and type the text string that you need to display. You can use a host of options to set the text style and alignment. You might have to play a little with it to make it behave. Now hit the extrusion tool and set the height. Note that in this case we are not going to extrude from the sketch plane. Instead, we are going to begin from the outer surface. Also, note that the mirror will not work in this case. On the other hand, the mirror component option in the assembly environment is a lot more versatile which you are going to see further down the line. Now that we have the geometry, let's add a few finishing touches by making the sharp edges smoother using fillet. Now fillet is a very complex tool using which you can generate a lot of variations with precise curvature control, but only one edge at a time. Now when we have so many edges as in the present case, it might not work due to the geometric limitation with different edges. Now you'll see the different types of fillets as we go on, but for now let's settle with the fact that Face fillet can help you where edge fillet can't. Even the mirror feature struggles with the fillet. To recap, you can see some of the tools and techniques learned in this lesson guide, which you can also download with the link in the description. Alright, let's take a break here and in the last part of this lesson, we will learn about rendering the part and producing some lifelike images playing with the materials, scenes and colors. We will also produce the final disc and the caliper assembly with the fluid lines using routing. So do join our community on Facebook and YouTube and partner with us on Patreon to share our work and revenue. Have a good one.